Speaking of stupid, we're doing a second podcast for the same show. <laughs> uh, okay, well, we got the intro down. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah. How did you... I thought it was $33,000. Yeah. It, that's how much one Bitcoin is. You can buy a percentage of a Bitcoin. Yeah. Of a Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. Can you imagine those people that bought Bitcoin when it was like, uh, like twenty cents, right, per Bitcoin? Or that dude that can't remember his password? Yeah, he's got two hundred and twenty million dollars in Bitcoin. <laughs> mm. Anywho, yep. So it's almost like grown. What did you buy it with, Robinhood? No, Cash App. Cash App. You know that had that feature? Yeah, I don't have Cash App. Dang, dang millennials in there. I think he's a Gen, uh, Gen Zer. So I own point zero zero two zero five three <laughs> seven seven Bitcoin. <laughs> not impressed. Yeah, you so, so not not <clears throat> one Bitcoin, just a very small percentage of one. But my five hundred dollar <laughs> would be investment would be about three grand right now. Is that like saying since I own some stock in Ford that I own Ford? Yeah. I own point zero 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 seven six one zero zero two one seven. Of Ford, I mean, yeah. if you can memorize it, then then you then you have it. Then, you, then it's yours. So does so if it goes down to ten thousand, do you own more Bitcoin? No. Do you own more percentage of one Bitcoin, or do I mean, how does how does that work? You no, you still, I'm pretty you sure that Bitcoin's just a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> it is. Well, it What's is. like that? It's just a big freaking. It's just like it's the just US dollar. It, no, actually, I didn't say the US dollar wasn't bullshit. Actually, it's not, though. Bitcoin has a set number of coins that can be mined, and that's it. Once they can be mined? Mine, what, what are you mining? You, it's like, <clears> it's like a computer mining, software. You computers break down this code. <clears throat> it's just a crazy math equation. Yeah. yeah. It says this is how much exists, and those math equations are broke down with big workspace computers. Mm -hmm. I've done it. Actually, uh, excuse me, what? So that that's how you get. So if I if I build this like big fancy computer and I uh, can wow. figure out how to break down the the math equation, I can own Bitcoin without buying it. There's mm -hmm. Bitcoin miners who mm -hmm. are rich off their butt. I've done it. They spend hundreds of thousands of dollars of building these machines <clears throat> that mine this Bitcoin, and they get rich off their butt for it. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. They used to. It's really hard to do now. It, yeah, I mean, there's mo a lot of the Bitcoin has been mined now. That's why it's growing in value so quick. Why? Well, um. Because uh, you can't just print more of it. There's a well, set number. It, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know <laughs> why. Who built this up and who gave it value? Some dude from India, and he crowdsourced it, and that's how it started growing, and then it's just taken off. And it's supposed to be super encrypted, and every transaction can be tracked, and because it's all done through computers. So because of that, people feel like it's gonna be the next currency. It's super safe. Um, it's never gonna be the new currency. Um, I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that, man. I, I think it could be. It, it won't be a new currency because people want, people will want tangible. Um, okay, so somebody just one day decided that they were gonna create this math equation where people had to had to figure this math equation out to be able to get these coins and this guy just gave it a uh, value and in a very simple way yes mm -hmm. and then people just decided that it was worth something yep pretty much there's a lot of idiots in the world wow <laughs> now it's actually worth a lot wow looks like that guy that sold his billionaires because of bitcoin well, well so so is is Never. the is the guy that created it is he rich now? I'm sure. How is it? Indian, how, any, I, any from India? I, I don't know. Okay, so how how is it? I mean, <laughs> it's extreme. My brain's working in overdrive here. Why why didn't he just crack the equation since he wrote the damned thing? He doesn't know the equation. He wrote it. <laughs> it's a supercomputer it's equation. It's a supercomputer equation. The computer wrote the equation. He just coded. No human can break it down. To, he told the computer, hey, do this. And the computer created this crazy equation that no human can break down. It can only be broken up by computers that have 
ten times more processing power than us. Really? Per mm-hmm. second. That's why they're hundreds of thousand dollar <laughs> computers. That's why it will never be the next currency. And if, um, if you want your mind a little more messed up, they have another one out, a crypto out that, uh, that is based off of movement. Excuse me? It's a geotag. Wait, I didn't see that one. It's a geotag, and That's you get you make money uh, by moving. It tracks movement and gives you... Cryptocurrency. That, that just goes to prove that, like, all these people that say that OBS trucks are not collectible or not whatever, <laughs> that just goes to prove to you that anything is worth whatever somebody will pay for it. Mm-hmm. Right. Because that's what worth it, is. That's I, what value I, I, is. I, value is just what you see. You know that little is. emoji where the top of his head's blowing up? That's <laughs> my, my head's like, Before right. Money. I mean, I, I, I get, I, I get that, I get that, that Bitcoin is, um, is like valuable or whatever because people have been buying it, but like, why did everybody all of a sudden just decide that that was what was going to be worth a lot of money? It was valued by the U.S. dollar, though, if you really think about it, because that's the people who bought into it. So that's how it was given its value. The U.S. dollars were traded for it pretty much one-to-one until it started growing. And people were like, oh, this is super encrypted. This is a better currency than the U.S. dollar that they just print at will. And that's why it kind of t- took over. But, I mean, if you think about it, before money... Value was just hey, I got some. I got know, some chicken. I got some corn that I. That well, I mean, I, I get that. Yeah, I mean, like Value barter trading and stuff saying. like that. So he, hey. just, he basically he's a marketing genius. He just found a way to market this currency that he created. Did he though, or is there some kind of bigger well, something there are at play? Conspiracies behind it. Well, some my my question play. is is like uh, like I guess I guess I've always been hung up on it because it's a one world currency. Yeah. That is a big issue. I, uh-huh. For I, sure. Uh, I mean, it, to be fair, you can go pretty much anywhere in the world and use the U.S. dollar. For the most part. For the most part. Hey, hey, Rustin, how's that microphone? Part of my theory is that... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like if we're recording this, we might as well add Bitcoin to the to the conversation. Well, we said well. we were going to do whatever we were going to do, so we might as well. Like, this is, this is, like, <clears throat> this is for fun. And this is to talk about whatever the hell we want to talk about, including OBS trucks. Part part of my theory is that it will be part of the whole one world one world order when that actually takes place. I don't know if it's biblically someone... that will take place. One like, world order. I like how in the middle of this, Paul's just playing on his phone. Yeah, it's oh, and, literally an addiction. And by the way, <laughs> I am a millennial. The last year of millennials. Are you? Ninety six so, was the last year. Ninety six. That's is ninety six the last year? Absolutely. I, I think you just made that up. And see, they're let's look to say, it up. They're trying to say 87 is the first year, but that puts me as a millennial, too. 85 is the first year. Is it 85? Yeah. I don't That's, think they freaking know, because I've heard 80. You out there watching, why don't you look it up and tell us what year? <laughs> it's it's uh, it's eighty it's 84, 85 is the first year of millennial. Anywho. 1981 to 1996. There you go. It really says, like, 94, but he just said to 96. The Pew Research Center defines millennials as born from 1981 to 1996. Whoever the Pew Research Center is. Oh, fancy. Yeah, that, uh, I trust mm-hmm. that. Anyways, so we were, uh, last time we were talking about uh, taking comments and such. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, which ha- last time? Well, <laughs> failed last time or the last time that worked? <laughs> You know, you're going to make Seth feel bad about himself. Things happen, okay? Look, it's not Seth's fault, okay? <laughs> it's a mouthful of nuggets. <laughs> it's not Seth's fault, okay? <laughs> That's called him out on that. A nugget burger over there. Yeah. I, I kicked the camera over at the end of the show, and we lost everything. I, it's my fault. Blame it on me. It's more fun I'm just proud that we have a mic on Rustin this time. Yeah. I'm really, I like so the fact that he has to hold it. So many, like, looks I like, like a fuzzy the fuzzy caterpillar he, over there, but. I, I so, like the so fact that I get the pet I referenced, uh, I referenced Rustin in the first one, and you, nobody could hear him. Yeah. So, everybody in the room has a mic this time? Yeah. Oh, Absolutely. yes. You want to show him my mic? <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to see that. Uh, oh. Ooh. Questionable. Things. Okay. Um, Anyways, so yeah. What about those? Uh, what about those comments there, Seth? So no we, comments. Uh, 
What? Hmm? Uh-uh. Hmm? Nope. Anyways, you know, we, uh, I believe we, we said last time, you know, we would take comments from people and, and uh, yeah. Yeah. you know, mm-hmm. good, bad, stupid, indifferent, you know, whatever. And uh, Jib Slappy, a uh, good customer of ours, said, hey guys, great job. Looking forward to the next one. Wasn't the Paw Paw truck testing a new fuel tank? Question mark. Would be very interested in learning if y'all are putting together a kit for it. I like how he emphasizes y'all. I had to. Like that's wrong. Jeb, you're welcome to come slap him. Oh, (laughs) dang. (laughs) That was a very, very bad joke. Very terrible joke. Extreme. (laughs) Like, <laughs> welcome to the CP Attic Podcast, where we talk about OBS trucks and make really bad jokes. Really bad. <laughs> um, yeah, so Popal Truck is testing, officially, is testing the 40-gallon tank. It wasn't last week when we originally shot this episode. <laughs> yeah. Gosh. Now man. it is. <laughs> wow. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Well, and it's got a 38, right? Yeah, well, we're... Uh, we're it's... It's got 38 gallon rear Bronco tank, but we're also testing a 40 gallon midship tank. So in total, it's got 78 gallons of fuel on board. Underslung. So So how far will 78 gallons of fuel take you? About 100 miles away he drives. It depends on how you want to to break down the equation. Um, if you supercomputers, if, if you, <laughs> so let's come let's uh let's call the guy in India that that made the supercomputer. No, um, let's confab with Bitcoin to figure out value on that. If um, <laughs> it's six point six six five Bitcoin is how far it'll go. <laughs> the whole the whole thing like you just do you realize you just like six six I, I six did it just there? came out I don't know why uh, that's pretty creepy and kind of it is. Did you do it on purpose or did it just come no, out? No, it just came out. Mm. You'll have that. Maybe I should sell my Bitcoin. <laughs> You're zero zero point zero zero hey. seven six one. It doesn't matter, man. It's grown. It's all. <laughs> you can buy a double cheeseburger now. <laughs> That's what she said. Oh, oh, gosh. <laughs> during... Anyway. In, in the ditch. So, so you, um, uh, if, if you want to look at it like miles, um, something like, 1300 miles is what I can do before having to fuel up. If you want to look at it another way, like three oil changes, I can, I, or uh, like three, what, what, no, like, uh, like, like, like three Phillips is, is to one oil change. So every time you fill up, you get the oil change. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> it's like that saying that's typically for really crappy cars, you know, uh, uh, check the gas, top off the oil. <laughs> Pretty much. So yeah, it's, um, uh, nowadays, uh, I, I should be able to to fill up like three times in between oil changes. You know, I get five thousand miles to fill up or to, bam. Wow, <laughs> I'm gonna. You know, I do the That's same. That's all, folks. I do the same thing too, but it's the fact that I drive two miles a day to work. So do you just like change it once a year? You yeah, pretty much. <laughs> just just out of You're like you, you know you know that that stuff that that motor oil is. Of several million years old, it's not like it's got old in the crankcase. Yeah, yeah. Says it, oil's old. We gotta change it. <laughs> <laughs> got mold on it. <laughs> right. When Time you, to change it's it. It's only like two hundred million years old anyway. Right. Two hundred million and one. That's why it needs to be changed. There you go. You can check the date. Well, I can't remember the last time I did it. Might as well do it. <laughs> Been there, done that before. <laughs> the problem is, is nowadays my uh, my memory's so bad, like. I did it yesterday. Did it? I can't remember the last time I did that. <laughs> pull Sounds the, getting old, huh? And pull the dipstick on it and go, eh, it's still pretty golden. <laughs> it, it's not to add might yet. Well, might as well throw an oil filter on it and call it good. <laughs> Check the dipstick. There's nothing there. Well, yep, time to change. Time to change. Been there before, too. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. I didn't realize that oil leak was quite that bad. <laughs> right. Best thing about a 7.3 is... Won't run without enough oil in it. <laughs> Been there too. Yeah. Why is it running bad? Have you checked your oil recently? <laughs> hmm. Why is that? Uh, because it runs off of a Huey injection system. So uh, hydraulic over electric unit fuel injectors. So it uses oil pressure to pressurize the fuel, the fuel. in each injector. So if it doesn't have enough oil pressure or enough oil to build pressure, it won't run. Mm-hmm. 
So it's kind of like a fail safe. So that's actually kind of smart. Not, well, that's what it's, it's not meant to be used that way, but you <laughs> can use it that way. <laughs> Ask me how I know. We're going to keep you from <laughs> mostly destroying your engine. Keep you from mostly destroying your I mean, there's it, a reason it, I mean, why. There's plenty of oil left in the engine to uh, to all the main bearings and all that stuff, so it's not like it's going to like grenade itself, but it's just not healthy on it. <laughs> so could that be why they run for like a million miles? That and they don't have enough power to kill themselves. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, yeah. I mean, they're like basically a tractor engine. Turtle power. They're, <laughs> they're the only more are pretty powerful strong. than the first gen twelve valve. That is literally a tractor engine. <laughs> well, they're, they're more powerful than an IDI though. Touche. That is also literally a tractor engine. Dude. Mm-hmm. I had one. Non turbo. Ooh wee. Hmm. Turned All up. 87 horsepower. He pulled a little red wagon with a tractor. Right. <laughs> and it struggled. <laughs> I remember the first time I put a pyro on that thing. And, uh, and you just took it right back off. He's like, Ugh. <laughs> pretty much. I got out on the, got on the on ramp to the highway, was driving it like I would normally drive it. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, that's 1300 degrees. And I was going like 30. <laughs> oh, crap. <laughs> yeah. Have you considered changing your air filter? Right. So, yeah, um, test phase right now of the 40-gallon tank. The 38-gallon tank is pretty well, like, a thing. It's it's a Bronco tank. So, I mean, they've literally been making them since they were new. Uh, this tank is a fabricated sheet metal steel tank that replaces the midship tank. And it basically goes from the transmission to the rear axle. It is massive. We don't have everything uh, dialed in just yet. Still, uh, Still kind of... Working on a few bugs, trying to figure them out, but luckily it's completely full of fuel. <laughs> <laughs> Intelligent me, ah, the sending unit's not working. Maybe the float's stuck. Let's just fill it full of fuel. <laughs> Seth earlier said, "So how are you going to fix that?" I said, "I don't know. I got to drive like a thousand miles before I can check it." <laughs> <laughs> I figure yeah. I'll just drive until it starts to die, and then I'll flip it to the rear tank. Then I'll know it doesn't have any fuel in it. There you go. <laughs> Hey, it's got another fail safe. It, see? See? It's like the perfect truck ever, man. It is mm. like double redundancies everywhere. Yeah. Uh, it does have a drain valve, or a, a, uh, I guess you put a valve in it, a drain plug in the bottom of it, so I could drain it, but... Yeah, if you wanted to just... I'm entirely too lazy for that. Cry a thousand dollars away. Well, I wouldn't know? drain it on the, on the freaking <laughs> ground. The EPA's listening. Oh. We don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah no i uh first of all i don't want to buy enough gas cans to uh right that's like 50 40 gas gallons can. uh <laughs> some of that missouri math over there <laughs> i'm glad i was not telling them that. <laughs> yeah 50 to 40 some of those gallons it's called an exaggeration come on four <laughs> <laughs> um Somehow we had negative <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> if it sits in one spot too long, it may be negative gallons, depending on how somebody's... Uh... <laughs> it's a 40-gallon gas can, or a 40-gallon gas tank, but we need 50 gas cans to drain it out. Yes. They're all half-gallon. You never know what you might run into. So, yeah, we were going to... So far, we have figured out what Bitcoin is and talked about a 40-gallon tank. Yep. I love the progress so far. Hey, we're we're <laughs> this is this is far less disruptive. Get on it, son. What about disruptive? This is far less disruptive than the first time or yeah. the second time. Yeah. Even though this is the second one published. Uh, oh gosh. <laughs> Listen, we had problems, okay? Listen, Linda. We're doing we we're actually recording this time, so we are doing <laughs> our production studio. Up. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens when you hire low uh, low rate uh production hands yep. mm. Mm. that's it <laughs> <laughs> i bought rustin off with some mcnuggets <laughs> <laughs> don't forget the pizza that, that's oh yeah we, we did pizza too yeah man i nope. had to feed him twice except it didn't really pay for itself since we kind of screwed up well <laughs> i mean yeah this uh the Return on investment here is uh, is is going down quickly. So let's yeah. uh, let's talk about something productive. Well, we were supposed to talk about the different projects we got going on around here, aren't we? Yeah, that we're doing this time. That's what we were supposed to do. Well, what about that weird-looking Bronco thing? Well, we're 
Aren't we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I love how fast he catches on. Aren't, aren't we talking about projects that are going to LST? I think we were just talking um, about projects in general. Projects in general. Because he's talking about his F Super Duty, and that's like 15 years away hey, from getting done. Hey, hey, nobody ask you. He likes to take it apart and then go, what happened? I am good at taking projects apart and then not finishing them. Because taking I it apart. I have six of those. Taking it apart doesn't cost anything. I, I have $10,000 in motor parts laying in the floor out there. I just kind of bolt them on. <laughs> and what does he do? <laughs> Buy more parts. Buy another truck. Or three. <laughs> I don't want to hear nothing out of you. I have not to this day. You've already started cannibalizing the dually. Borrowing. Thank you. The dually. Permanent. Yeah, he's got a dually truck in his car carport, garage, whatever the hell it is. It's in the garage now. His lean to. Hmm. He, has a, that he has a bag dually that uh, supposedly at one time it ran. So y'all have never seen it run? Mm -hmm. No. I've never it's seen a fairy it in one piece. And then he's making fun of me. Tear it apart. Don't Listen, it. I was I was well on my way to getting that thing finished, and then they're like, "Hey, you want a job down in Texas?" I'm and like a moron. I'm like, "Sure, I'll just drop everything and come on down." Well, I mean, anytime you have the opportunity to move to Texas, why not? you take it. I'm you won't like, be calling yourself a moron in the next year. Yeah, you'll we'll be like, "Yeah, I'm so glad I moved to Texas." <sighs> hey, what um, are you doing? My mic fell off. You leave me alone. What we could do to be productive is set some like deadlines for you to finish that project. <laughs> hey, if you want to supply the money, I'll gladly hmm. follow a deadline. If we had Seth's money, we'd all just retire. Oh, okay. You know how many hours a day Elon Musk sleeps? I'm I'm not Elon. Oh, you, sh you should be. He's like the trivia guy for Elon Musk. I know. Actually, in an interview, he, he advised people not to work like him. Yeah. He said, I, I don't advise it. Yeah. It's pretty stupid, actually. Well, it's like all those damn Instagram influencers. Influence. Work hard. Work hard. Work harder. Work harder than your other people that you know. Work harder than your friends. Work eighty well, no hours a day. No shit. That's that's definitely how that works. Like, but but people get breaks. Like you're afforded breaks uh, as you as you uh, grow and you and you build your business. Like there are certain instances that that happened to us that would not have we would not be where we are had we not been in the right place at the right time like all this work hard work hard bs like i've made way more connections drunk in a club <laughs> <laughs> hanging out with friends so than i ever sense. have busted my ass at two o'clock in the morning so now just, you know just being serious. Well, I, I guess where I was going with that is like <laughs> you can be working i mean no, you just... can be working super hard but if you're up you're just up twice as hard as you're actually <laughs> fixing it like oh let me work real hard at this not to mention that it is ways from sunday when you're done and you're like man well, that didn't work and you've lost half your life and you lost half your life instead of slowing down and going oh that's how that works well there's something to be said too about what your what your effective uh working hours are elon musk obviously has a lot a He's lot greater uh number of working effective working hours like some people like me i can't do that i can't work i can't work constantly seven days a week 18 hour days i, I just can't do it I, you get exhausted i like to have a life i like to think about other things besides work and like i just get distracted and start being unproductive i most of the time i never think about work but whatever um <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I was thinking about. Anyway. I just, I just believe that's why he's working so hard to get to Mars. He's reunite with his alien race over there. I mean, maybe. I, mean, he just, <laughs> I wonder if he's who it. crashed in Roswell in the fifties. Wow. <laughs> huh. Pot this twist. is the second mind blowing point of this. Of this. <laughs> I mean, they declassified the stuff this year. I wonder if, like, you know, <laughs> he's the supercomputer. That. Oh, no, man. that's why he's the supercomputer. That's why he endorsed it on his Twitter See? account, and it blew up. Bam! We just figured out everything, y'all. We should be rich. I make sure I didn't get a uh, text message from the FBI. Take that shit down. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> while we're recording it, <laughs> haven't even seen the editing screen. Mm, yeah, get a knock on the door, hand a piece of paper through. <laughs> Cease and desist. We haven't even aired this yet. <laughs> So yeah, I uh I don't know like 
I think it has to be like you being effective. Like, if does that make sense? Like, you yeah. can you can work eight hour days and be just as effective as somebody that's working twelve hours a day. I mean, that's that's very apparent with the people you know. Like, how many people do you know that work shift work that work seven twelves for like three months straight and they're absolutely dead, and you know they're not getting any, anything done at work. They're like just kind of goofing off half the time stuff like that and then if you if you're doing something that you like and you're and and you're you know not super exhausted and you're working eight hours a day you're getting further than they are in a shorter amount of time so some people can just work more hours effectively well and 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 another way to complete projects is uh uh guy that we know that builds airplanes said this in a magazine uh a little while back his name is mike patey and he builds like crazy fast airplanes and really cool stuff all the time. And he said the way to complete a project and complete it in a timely manner is do one thing a day on it. Mm-hmm. Like maybe you're not, maybe you don't have a CNC router table that you need to make this one widget out of, but you can order 50 machine screws that you need to mount something up with. So you order 50 machine screws today. Tomorrow you order whatever piece you need. The next you day you go and unbolt this one thing. You like go as and, long as you accomplish one thing that day, you're moving forward on the project. And it's the it's the fact that most people they just don't do anything for months well, on end. Well, you get overwhelmed. You're like, I need to do this, and I need to do this, and I need to do this, and I can't get this part right now, and it's going to cost me this much to do this, and then I've got to find somebody to make this. When in reality, you can just start by, all right, I need to order screws. I need to go take this mounting bracket off. I need to strip this part and get it ready for paint. I need to take this out so I can take it to the sandblast shop. How do you eat an blah, elephant? Blah. But yeah, basically. Yeah, you, you eat an elephant one bite at a time. Well, and, and that's that's kind of all of our projects right now from from my Centurion to your 350 to, to Seth's uh, crew cab short bed. It's all just like little pieces at the time mm-hmm. as we can do it and, and get it done. Like one of the things that Seth did was uh, recently is he, he was putting the lower and kit on his truck and before he got started every day he was like i want to i want to rebuild the front end correct me if i'm wrong mm-hmm. i want to rebuild the front end while i'm in there so i ordered or i didn't order seth ordered coal springs one day and then the next day he figured out what ball joints he's needed and he got those and then he got tie rod ends and he got pivot bushings and he got this and he got this and he got this and he got this until he had everything he needed in a pile and then started to work on it and then the project I won't say went smooth because you changed up a whole bunch of stuff. But <laughs> projects ever go smooth. No. But but he had what he needed when he started because he did little bit at the time mm-hmm. and knocked out the lowering kit relatively quickly because he had done the due diligence to to start on the project. Yeah, I mean, and it's like you say, it's more than just uh, it's more than just working on it too. It's uh, it's uh, or more than just ordering parts. It's it's working on it too. You know, like let me go unbolt this one piece if i've only got an hour to work you know i can i can i know i can get this off so well i, can, I mean I can get these out you you come home from work and the old lady's yelling at you and you you're supposed to have done politically correct yes yeah, old you're, lady yeah your uh significant other your beautiful wife uh well that's not politically correct either oh, absolutely because I mean, under, under the biden administration mm-hmm. well we're not under the biden yeah, yeah, <laughs> maybe on, a, man, I'm Joe biden. <laughs> a, a woman and a man you oh, never know yeah. what might happen oh, there my but God. uh and you've only got 15 or we 20 minutes to to do something you take that 15 or 20 minutes to to work on your project for the for the evening and that's a progression and that's like that's how we all get projects done is doing a little bit daily because we all work 14 hours a day but i mean by the time we get to work we do our due diligence at work and then there's stuff that comes in after work for all of us uh that we take care of so i feel like i feel like that's a good point too for projects that are like expensive you know Mm -hmm. you're like how in the world am i going to do this and you kind of get discouraged and you just give up on it rather than just you know, one month you buy this piece and the next month you buy, and then yeah, you actually like, complete the project rather than just giving up on it. And and that can be said too about, uh, about like compromising on, on cheaper parts or something like that. Like you say, you really would like to do, uh, and you're not going to understand this, but I'm going to describe it this way anyway. Like, like if you do a, um, uh, you, you really want to do a lift kit with a reverse shackle and, uh, and then, you know, shackle flips in the back, but you know, Skyjacker or um, Superlift or whoever just builds a spring lift and block and U-bolt kit that's going to ride like garbage. Um, but it's 
half the price. Well, you know, most people just go, oh, I'll just buy that. You know, you could you can you can seriously buy it in, in pieces. You know, there's nothing there's no reason why you can't buy like the reverse shackle piece this month, and then you can buy well, the rear piece. You know, uh, well, whatever you can well, buy them in pieces and, and break it up over several months. Well, and and that's a good point <clears throat> because I take a lot of the phone calls for tech questions and stuff like that. So, like, just I'm gonna roll into your reverse shackle instance. There is we get a ton of people call in that are like, hey. I've got a 250 and I'm converting it to uh, a 99 front axle. And while I'm at it, I want to lift it some. And, you know, we, we just get into this, this full conversation of what they're doing. And then they say, what do I need to do for the rear end of the truck? And, and this is where it comes into a piece at the time. You throw so many variables that do in the front end of the truck that you could wind up at the end of it, you could have seven inches of lift when you only ordered a four inch kit because the springs you got or the axle you got or swapping the, the 60 in and automatically an inch of lift there's just so many different variables you can buy the front kit get it the truck under its own weight and then you see what you need for the rear then you can decide shackle flip block and u-bolt 08 to 16 spring swap 99 to 07 spring swap and you can actually set the rear to to your desired height which is that little bit at the time you can do the front first, then you do the rear later and it gives you. Well, I mean, even at that too, like a project like that can get almost overwhelming. Just thinking about when am I going to find time to do this? Because it's not an easy job to do mm -hmm. a front axle swap and do the rear suspension and all the other stuff and get all those parts put on the truck. But if you did it in a couple of, a uh, couple of different segments, maybe even in a couple of different weekends, it's not that, not that, uh, that mm -hmm. big of an undertaking. Cause you can, you can break it up in little small projects. Josh found out uh, the other weekend doing that Dana safety <laughs> swap in his extended cab how just how, how much of a project it really is. Mm -hmm. And he just did a regular old Dana sixty swap with a and he two was, inch RSK. Yeah, he was uh, he was a four wheel drive F two fifty extended cab going to a Dana sixty with a reverse shackle. Um, he's actually spent the better part of uh, of six months buying up parts and like he would buy because he rebuilt the axle and he uh, he did all new brakes he did all new. Uh, uh, tie rods and all that stuff but he did it a little at the time you know he bought up this part and then this part and then this part and then he would like work on the axle a little while mm -hmm. you know get the gear set he would do the wheel bearings on the outside he would do the brakes and then he you know he got everything kind of ready and then he tackled uh, the actual he install. tackled the actual install um which allowed him to break it up over a long period of time without having to just do the whole project and take him like a week and his trucks down for a week and all that sort but, of stuff. But it still wound up being more of a project. Now he's got a he's got an ass dragon going on. He had to come in the office the other day. Well I mean and, it's, and it's get just, the block and U bolt kit that fits properly. It's just like that. Like every truck sits different, you mm -hmm. know, and we could have sold him a, a four inch block and it would have re really needed a four and a half inch block. Mm -hmm. Because his truck is half inch taller than or yep. in the front than most well and that that lets you set it up too to where <clears throat> if you want the 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 rear of the truck just a little bit taller or if you want the rear of the truck dead even or if you want the rear of the truck just a little bit lower it goes to to show you that little bit at the time project turns into a, a simple job when you get down to it and then it you allows get a more refined uh uh, product. product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your in your in product is exactly what you want versus just going. I'm going to spend a thousand dollars on a lift kit today, and then it comes in. And you throw it on the truck, and the truck is all wonky. You're still low in the front. You're low in the back. And you, I you, have ridden in something for twenty six hundred miles with a rough country lift under. It. <laughs> I almost didn't have kidneys when I got here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look good, but it didn't ride worth a crap. So I mean, at the end of the day, uh, there are, there are a lot of ways to accomplish. As everybody always asks us, you know, how do you how do you make all this stuff happen? You know, well, it's not all at one time. Mm -hmm. And we, we didn't it, it, just, just like growing a business, just like doing a project, just like doing any of this stuff, it doesn't happen all at once. Yeah, everything is a ten year overnight success. Remember that. Sometimes thirty. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been. How long did we figure out the other day that we've been doing this? 11, 11 years? Well, and officially 11 years, yeah. So I feel like that's a really big problem. So many people just well, don't do anything. Highlight reels on social media don't do very uh, very much for people's self-esteem anymore. Mm -hmm. All you yeah. see is is what somebody uh, what, what somebody's successes are. Nobody posts on there the, the way they failed or yeah, right. how they took a screw in this way or that way. Um, and get and get anything constructive out of it. Anyway, 
it so so there's no there's never any constructive uh like negatives about people's life um so then everybody always just thinks well th- this should be so easy why is my life so hard you know mm-hmm. and I, I think that's a huge problem because people don't know that they they have to they have to struggle for years we worked through the first five or six years we were in business without collecting a single paycheck we worked for five five years at maybe, least without being paid yeah maybe, and maybe longer probably than that. eight without being paid regularly you know mm-hmm. just getting paid when we could get paid uh so we, we broke, took really 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 broke we took just enough money to pay what few bills we had hell we rode to work every day so we could save diesel fuel uh work together yeah 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 well well yeah you you would pick me up or i would pick you up yeah. to save save diesel fuel going to and yeah, from so work we didn't, we didn't burn extra fuel that we didn't have to stuff like that like and i'm not saying that we're successful uh right now you know like we're still we're still working towards that i feel like but still we're better off than we were well we I are mean, the number one obs ford podcast yes 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 we are that number one number podcast one OBS ford podcast with only the second one published yes yes <laughs> Set never your mind standards that low, and never you mi- never you never get disappointed. Never mind that we're the only, but that's that's beside <laughs> the point. Why did you say that? You huh? better cut that out. <laughs> Hell, uh, back then we we would get up early and go mow yards in the morning, and then we'd work till right before dark, and then we would go mow two yards on the way home every day. That's that's a good point to the fact that just because you're working all the time does not mean you're getting ahead. We finally figured out that hey, all we are is exhausted. We're still poor. So <laughs> I'm still poor now. So I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> well, there could be a reason. <laughs> not that you're but not there's getting thirty of the trucks parked outside. Uh, right? Yeah. <laughs> and how many of them are yours? <laughs> That's besides the point. That's besides the point. No, it's a good point. You you worked hard. You created a business, and now you get to reap the benefits. Of well, but but at the end of the day, like everybody just always thinks that everybody that's successful or that's doing well or whatever they um uh they they did it yesterday. You know, mm-hmm. right? You just you, I think that's lost on a lot of people, which sucks. You Thank know? the microwave world we live in. Yes. Who invented microwaves? What in- <laughs> the Russians? What an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> Wow, <laughs> I, I don't think that's the right the word you were looking for. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> we'll run with it. Yeah. Oh. Anywho, they do work as a miniature Faraday cage, though. <laughs> what? They work as a miniature Faraday cage. <clears throat> no signal in, no Google. signal out. I just um... they 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 uh, yeah they they shut down all all uh, radio waves. Period. And if At you. All. And if you cook whatever you throw in there, then you make sure that it never works again. Mm-hmm. Ask Edward Snowden. <laughs> you ever microwave a CD? A what? A CD. You no. probably don't even know what a CD is, do you? I absolutely know what a CD is. I've burned <laughs> CDs before. You saw it in a museum once. <laughs> I, I've ripped CDs before. I've, I've done it all. You gave your... Did you give your family computer aids with LimeWire? <laughs> 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 That's I just remember LimeWire, but FBI would be like, but we would like to serve you with papers for those eight hundred thousand songs you downloaded from LimeWire, where, where you only got three actual songs, and the other ones were, "My name is Bill Clinton, and I did not have sexual relations with that woman." Wow! <laughs> Look, I remember LimeWire. That was like my first like interaction with computers and software and doing stuff I probably shouldn't be. <laughs> I don't know how you got 800,000. I had dial up. I think I'm still downloading a song. <laughs> that was his first Nickelback album. Oh god. I think oh, I was god. I think I was 7 at the time. Oh. 7 years old. Hmm. Learning how to use my mm-hmm. 7 Dell computer that was as big as a brick. Rustin, I was 7 years old. That was 3 years ago. 2014. We're not going to go there. Oh, gosh. <laughs> We're not going to go there. Dude. Didn't we have this conversation last first of this that's episode? Behind, that's behind us. That's behind us. That's behind us. I wish you guys would stop bringing up my failure, okay? <laughs> well, we just got finished talking about how there's never any highlight reels on people's failures, so we figure we'll exploit yours. Well, you guys need a, you guys need a new accountant now because one of them can't do math, so maybe that could be a... That's him. He can't do math. How old am I? How old was I? Oh, I'm making fun of you. In 2014? He's the one that said 50 gas cans. 
Listen. Well, that's true. <laughs> it listen, can't Linda. be you or you, Paul. Listen, Linda. Man, listen. We are 43 minutes in. We got one point. <laughs> yes. Hey, this is great. We turned into a productivity podcast over. I, I, I said when we started all this that I wanted to do like all kinds of stuff in these podcasts. That's true. I, I want to definitely. I, I want to talk about all kinds of stuff because yes. it, it's more interesting than just listening to a truck podcast about how are you building your truck, Paul? Mm. What are you going to do to your truck this year? What are you going to do next year? <laughs> Now we've talked about Elon Musk, Bitcoin, and figured out that Elon Musk is look, the supercomputer that, de that designed it. That's, look, that's like, th th this has been really beneficial. I mean, I have proof. Look at this. I've, I've taken yeah. notes off of you guys' great comments. I like that. Yeah. I took notes. Did like, you Did you start figuring out that when you have questions, you you need to put down uh, you need to put down your questions? Absolutely, because yes. you know, like you said earlier, my brain sucks as well. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember crap. So. I wonder consume too much was. content. That smell. Well, that, that noise was what was on the camera from the last podcast. <laughs> Gosh, dang it. Are we actually, sure we're actually recording this one? Actually, yeah. let's uh, let's be real. There was no noise oh. on that. So <laughs> that, was, that was quite the problem. <laughs> there was, there yeah, was poor Seth. <laughs> there was no, Seth was super bummed about that. <laughs> there, was, there was 15 minutes of no noise, and then the rest of it was like... <laughs> Exactly like that. Probably would have been a pretty good podcast. <laughs> Better content than this. We we could have just titled it. Uh, this time we talked about Chevrolets. Yep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> and all their good like? points. Today we're talking about dial-up internet. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have successfully covered uh, Bitcoin and LimeWire. That was a big. That's a that's a big difference. That's in a big circle. Oh, we went that's a big difference in technology. Both have about the same usefulness. Oh wow! You can buy a lot of questionable things with Bitcoin, though. <laughs> you can. You can, can you? buy a lot of questionable things with a lot of stuff, though. I actually what? don't think that's true because you can get in trouble. It's all yeah, traceable. Well, that Bitcoin came out because of questionable purchases. Really? Well, I don't think it came out for it, but it was heavily used in such things because it's fully encrypted, hmm. so you can't find out where it came from. I thought it was totally traceable. No wonder Biden is the has has the most Bitcoin in America. <laughs> does he? Yes, it's a no, proven fact. Look it up. How much Bitcoin does Biden own? You're gonna be blown away. Okay, don't waste your time doing that. I made it up, but it sounded good. <laughs> Everybody else out there's like googling. <laughs> you roasted. <laughs> But I mean, it could be if it's encrypted. Who knows who's using it? I didn't know. Well, I mean, I knew it was safe. There's one thing safe. for sure that we know: Biden is not the supercomputer. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, man! I'm Joe Biden. <laughs> wow! <sighs> Holy! Cow. I really hope we do succeed after this. <laughs> <laughs> we could get in a lot of trouble. Well, we at least lost one of the seven people that watch this show. Dude, just you didn't wear your one. hat. I. I wore it the first time. Cut. I left it at home this morning on accident. Right here, you cut in a clip in of the last one. Nope. It's with, in, with the it's hat. In, it's at the house. Okay, right here. But I did wear my favorite band that needs to get back together. Turnpike Troubadours. They do need to get back together. Never heard of her. That's because you listen to shitty, I mean, bad music. We did just reference his Nickelback collection. <laughs> I mean. that. Don't even put that on me. No. No. Over there Seth. listening to over there listening to somebody step on a cat's tail. Seth. <laughs> wow. Seth, Seth has a has his favorite collection of heavy metal music. All of it's five finger death punch. Yes. No. no. <laughs> Sound like this. <laughs> That's Seth's music right there, y'all. I gave that, you a short that's sample. What happened to the to the recording the first time. Yeah. Probably so. That's we just. That's probably the only recording that we got last time because he he said it went <laughs> like his music. Sounds mm. like a Chevrolet stereo system. Pretty much. Or a Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> hmm. huh. back to projects. <sighs> Not the housing kind. I grew up. In let's take project. our own advice and let's get this one done. Let's one one topic at a time. It, that, that's a good idea. So, yeah, um, the uh, the two uh, the two projects that 
we're working on right now is kind of like some projects where we're building trucks to travel with, not just um, like everything has a, like all these, all, all kinds of projects have all kinds of different reasons where uh, we're building like over the road stuff. Like we want to be able to travel and camp and, and look, what am I looking for? And I want to look cool while I'm doing it because I am cool. Is that why you bought a Ford or Bronco? <laughs> <laughs> Bronco. Can we, can we explain? Did can we, we do ex some explanation in the in the archived trash project last week? <laughs> can, we, can we pull yeah, that we, out we of the We probably should reiterate that for the people that couldn't hear it. <laughs> <laughs> All of us. Seth's going to have a complex by the time this is over with. Man. It's my fault. Man. Remember, I, I'm Isn't that a level on, on Goldeneye Complex? I think so, yes. That was yeah. the best video game ever. I mean, it's like the trucks from the 90s. Best things ever. Most things from the 90s were awesome. Including me. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of held you at the same level as dial-up. <laughs> <laughs> Slow and noisy. <laughs> oh. Wow. No wonder and I'm very struggling. little memory. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder I'm struggling getting my projects done. That's why this podcast is really speaking to me. Guys. Hey, man, we had to upgrade. We had to 56.6. <laughs> yeah. We had 12, what, 12.7 at one time? What was it, 12.7, 12.2? It was like low as shit. My, my mom literally used the phone line. Well, yeah, that's what dial-up is. I know. Yeah. yeah. Get off the uh, phone! <laughs> Up until like maybe ten years ago, my mom was still on twenty eight eight dial up. That was it, twenty eight eight. See, I don't even 12. know what those numbers mean because oh, dial up was twenty eight point eight kilobits per second. Kilobits. Wow, kilobits. I know what that is. That's terrible. That's up, up until uh, up until four years ago, uh, uh, Jade's uncle was still on dial up. Oh, well, I mean that makes sense. I mean, great uncle, older guy, still. Like, still on dial-up. I didn't even know they still had dial-up. Like, it, how is that still a thing? I guess if somebody's taking your money, they just <laughs> continue to do it. But still, whoa. I was literally mind blown. I think our 7.3s were faster than dial-up. Well, I was just going to say, I mean, dial-up. They had more, more, uh, more torque. That's not what I was going to say, but we'll go with it. <laughs> I always, used to always joke the uh, dial up at our Oh house. my God. The dial up. Are those Pichos? Yeah. Yes, they are. And I've been staring <laughs> oh at them. Oh my God, those are pe You got to give me some Pichos. Ah! Oh, 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 yeah, right onto the microphone. Oh, they're mine now. Wow. wow. Peach rings. Give me them. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> you want some Peach rings? Absolutely not. What? You know, what? Get what? <laughs> 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 can, can you hold my mic? This is the same thing you could hear from the last podcast. <laughs> Give me those. No. That's what happened. He was over there eating them. Cat <laughs> thing, take the whole bag, why don't you? You should have brought two. I try not to make a habit of eating. You didn't stuff break cinnamon rolls. Destroy my so brain. Hey, you gotta improvise. Do what? <laughs> I said I just I try not to make a habit of eating stuff that further destroy my brain. I already struggle enough in that area. Is this what's wrong with me? Yeah, all that refined sugar, man. You're dying as you eat that. No, mm. well, life is a is a uh, we zero turn, sum game. Should we turn this into a health podcast? Why not? I don't know, but it's really disgusting listening to you guys eat. <laughs> I bet, I bet it is. That's disgusting. <laughs> It don't bother. I can't hear myself, so I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> Have y'all seen that Facebook uh, marketplace thing where somebody uh, used a squirrel skin as a shifter boot? <laughs> <laughs> no, what? I'm not. It's, what? A, what? It's, it's a shifter boot. It goes from the shift knob all the way to the floor. <laughs> it's a whole damn squirrel has a tail on it. I have seen the squirrel purse. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> have I you seen the possum they, coin purse? You I've open seen. its mouth, it's like... <laughs> no, the, the squirrel purse, they, they call the it... you find on, on uh, the internet. It's they, amazing. They call it a squallet. <laughs> oh, wow. He just destroyed the camera. Yeah. <laughs> we just lost that audio again. 
Oh wow. my god, it was freaking great. <laughs> the squalid. The squalid. <laughs> Let me see if I can. No, I'm not. Can, that can you with. can you overlay a picture of a squalid for the viewers? <laughs> yeah. I will make sure to make that happen. Did you we'll, see the? We we'll have to we have to find the squirrel shifter boot and put it in here too. I'm, I'm pretty sure all that stuff came from Tennessee. Oh no, yeah. North Carolina. No, that's squatted trucks. No, where where oh. are you from? Missouri. Missouri. That's where it's. That's where it's from. Probably. Did you see this? <laughs> <laughs> Did you, did you see the guy that made a cat into a into a drone? <laughs> what? It's a it's a stuffed cat with uh with the motors in the end of the paws. Are it's you got kidding little, me? It, it's like no, flying it's cat. It's real. Oh, it's legit. It's a legit thing. It's a it's a it's a taxidermy cat. Go ahead and show that video too. <laughs> and now back from our commercial break. Hmm. Number two. You know, we're really going to have to get some sponsors, or this is just going to keep sounding weird. Right. I didn't say sponsor. I just said commercial break. We're going to have to get some commercials. I was about to say, we need a commercial. That's where you throw in a little <laughs> snippet of a... For a squalid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Now, for the low, low price of nineteen ninety five, you can buy a squalid. <laughs> no, it's four easy payments for nineteen ninety five. No, right now, and you, you get, get the squirrel <laughs> shifter <laughs> as a bonus item. But wait, there's more. Only pay shipping and handling. You can get the cat drone for. <laughs> <laughs> My God, come on, man! I'm Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> Is it just a meme or is it like sound? Because it's, a, it's just a meme. It, but but he, he's real famous for always saying, "Come on, man!" Yeah, like at the same at the debate. He's he's social media famous for "Come on, man." Well, now I have a cup of coffee, and we have fresh memory cards. Uh-huh. Rustin needs all the memory he can get. <clears throat> yeah. Wow. What was the question I was going to ask about the Bronco? I can't remember. Ford or Bronco. And okay. or what it really is. Oh, that's what, what I was What is it ask. really? For someone like me who doesn't know anything about these sorts anything of things. Or anything. Well, since mm. the, since this is deja vu, you already know the answer. Yeah. How about he you tell it. us? I forgot. He, he forgot it already. We had this conversation about my memory. What memory? That's why we had to go to a commercial break. We had to load new memory into Rustin. <laughs> <laughs> we won't say how. I'm refraining from, from another Elon Musk. Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the, you know, if, whole... if we continue on with this, we're going to have to build a uh, uh, Tesla-powered OBS. I thought we already we decided are. that it was the, a we did in the, in the, in... We, we did in the, in the hidden episode. <laughs> the hidden <laughs> episode. <laughs> <laughs> All of our plans were revealed in that one, let's, let's, but we didn't publish it. Let's make Seth feel better, and let's call it an unlisted episode. Maybe it's still there somewhere. It's just I'm not listed. It's deep in the archive somewhere. Yeah, it's in the deep state. <laughs> it's in deep something. It, yeah. Anyway, um, but yeah. You so, know. so you're gonna you you want to know why it's not actually a four door Bronco? Yeah, because you said something. Because it is a four-door Bronco, or it looks like one. You, you it said looks something like in the podcast that I can no longer remember about there not being really a such It thing. can't remember itself either. <laughs> <laughs> we cannot stay on task. Man, I tell you what. It's like herding cats. Let me go back through these notes. I need to get some, some good points. C-350 again. classic. Let's let's go okay. let's go with that. Yeah, let's go with that. Because it's, it's not a Bronco. What is a C-350 classic? It is a four door Bronco. No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still, well, I was you. trying to be good. <laughs> so, big confusion always is people are like, "Hey, it's four door Bronco." No, it, no, it's not. Nothing, nothing about it really is Bronco, other than some random bits of sheet metal and a fiberglass top. Um, <clears throat> in the nineties. The Chevrolet had the Suburban, and Ford didn't have anything that really competed with it. So a company out of uh, White Pigeon, uh, Michigan, built the C350, C1, well, let's back up. They built the C150, C250, C350, which was a Ford or Bronco to compete with the Suburban. So Ford dealers had to special order them <laughs> for customers or, or to put on their lot uh, to, to drive sales in to buy other trucks because it was a unique vehicle on the lot they typically 
on the the C one fifties started with an extended cab F one fifty, and they built everything on those because they didn't build a four door F one fifty back then. So they they built the roof, they built the B pillars, they built uh, C pillars, they they basically built everything. The the two fifties and the three fifties they typically started with a crew cab truck. Some of them short bed, but most of them long beds, and then uh, cut the frame, shorten the frame. Built all the bed cross members, built the flooring in the inside. They used the outer skins on the um, for the Bronco wheel wells, I guess. If you whatever back you want, the, the the back half, the, back yeah, half. the back. Well, they everybody thinks that they just <clears throat> cut a Bronco in half and welded them together. They they, they bought pieces and put the pieces together. Yeah, so they bought the outer skins, the quarter qu- panels. They bought the rear quarter panels from Ford of a Bronco. They bought the rear tailgate. And they bought the topper, the end. Nothing else is a Bronco. Absolutely nothing else. No floors in this uh, Bronco. <clears throat> no inner trim pieces really are a Bronco, but a few scattered random pieces. The rear seats aren't nothing to do with a Bronco. They were all special made. Um, and then, as most people know with Centurions, they hacked all the wiring together to make the defrost work <laughs> and the rear window to roll up and down and all that kind of stuff. So when you see them it's cruising down fabulous. the road... Uh, people think that they're a four-door Bronco because they look like a Bronco. And after a certain amount of time, you just get tired of correcting people and going, no, it's, it's, it's not a four-door Bronco to just say, yeah, it's a it's a diesel Bronco. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, mm-hmm. And then you could be mm-hmm. like me that knows the difference and still causes that damned excursion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, All the time. So you said Centurion. Is that like the actual name? Cause yeah. So, so that was the company that built them Good out point. of White Pigeon. Uh, they were uh, Centurion... Now I'm all screwed up. Centurion Motor Vehicles or something like that. I've I've got all the paperwork uh, at the office, but I don't remember. The off Centur- the top of my head. Centurion mm-hmm. was a company that upfitted vehicles for Ford. They were a licensed upfitter from Ford. Yeah. So they're like like Western Hauler that builds all the conversion flatbeds, like the Western style flatbeds and mm-hmm. stuff. Like when when Western Hauler gets a truck from Ford, they they get it from Ford. And they uh, they upfit it with all the alligator or ostrich skin seats and all the interior pieces and the custom bed and everything. And when it's sold, it's sold as a uh, as a brand new truck. It's never been titled to anybody. Ford. Yeah. So it like it gets sold to Ford dealership. It's not like it's sold as one owner as Western Hauler. Not yeah. like if you went upfitted the truck and then sold the truck, it would be right. a used truck then. Right. Well, like like back then. Uh, you you could build you you could get a build sheet at the dealership if you wanted to order one, and you could check off all the different accessories and things you wanted, and then uh, Centurion would build it and they would put whatever paint you wanted on there and whatever wheels and steps and brush guards and all that. But uh, even in the '90s, Ford in their their tech guides for their service department, if one came back in for warranty work, there was actually a tech guide from from Ford on how to diagnose wiring issues or um, I'm sure that diff- was well used. Yeah. yeah, well, different different ways that 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 things worked and and all of that in there. So the Ford technicians could actually do the warranty work on the Centurion vehicles at any Ford dealership in the nation. So what's crazy is how dealerships don't really do anything like that anymore. You can go up to the dealership and you can get a black, brown, gray, or white truck. The end. You can't get anything really special at a dealership unless you've got. A random dealer that likes to take it upon themselves to build something, and they have a local place to do it, <clears throat> and yeah. it's it's someplace local because nobody wants anything custom anymore. So you can't get six door trucks like you could back then, or or C three fifties or C one fifties, or you have to do all like that, that by yourself. Yeah, like, you, have, you have to go buy the truck yeah. and then yeah, yeah you and take then have it, it done. You yeah, to, you can't buy it new as a new Ford. Yeah, you have to whatever. spend you have to spend a hundred grand on it at the dealership, and then you have to go someplace else and spend another forty grand. You get it to where you want it to be anymore. Right. Where you used to could just buy them off the lot, which is the cool thing about the OBS trucks is because you could get two tones and you could get solid colors and you could get different cab configurations and you could get four door Broncos and you could get six door trucks and you could get crew well, cab extended cab trucks and all well, that mess. Well, and to be honest, we did define uh, at one point um, in the undocumented documentation. <laughs> Unlisted. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> um, the, the, that they did year. actually make four door Broncos. It just wasn't Centurion that did it. Yes. Yeah, and so, they were built on a Bronco chassis, yeah. and they were the only ones 
built with a Bronco title. Yeah, so that was that was the Brian. They they built they were a high end limousine company out of St. Louis, I think, and they built um, uh, or Springfield, St. Louis or Springfield. Mm-hmm. I don't know. There's Portland so many team over there. Said, woo. There's so many S towns in Missouri. It doesn't, anyways. What? Um, so they only built 35 <laughs> Broncos. <laughs> weird random facts. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. not really very many weird facts about Missouri, and that's one of them. I beg to differ. Well, I mean, you are there's, from Uranus, so. I No, I'm not from there. I've drove through there. Oh, close enough. Drove You've through? drove through Uranus? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they have a really good fudge factory there. <laughs> anybody, anybody that's drove through southern Missouri will know exactly what I'm talking about because there's billboards everywhere for it about fudge factory uranus yes. fudge the uranus fudge factory this seriously that was so intentional oh you, you think, don't think you think that was so it is a gimmick state so. okay 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 back back on track back on track back DeBrian. on track debrian built they built 35 in total ever yeah like, ever all of them yeah and there's only three known to exist we own one of them and then there's the the one that we own is a 92 to 96 body style, which is the only one of those known to exist. Yeah. It's it right now, uh, according to anybody that we know, is the one of one. Yeah, the one of one. There's no more of them made anywhere. There wasn't even ever any <clears throat> brochures that we. Yeah, that we, we, find. we can't find any brochures. There's no paperwork that's on them. The only reason we that we know it's the Brian is it's got a big ass sticker in the door that says "Built by the Brian Motor Coaches." Well, and, and the so. people that do have the Brian <laughs> brochures and everything, they they depict uh, brick nose Broncos. Yeah, and there's two OBS. of those known to be out and about. The cool part about the DeBrines is the middle seats were captain's chairs, and they're on swivels, so they they turn. Hmm. They the, don't just. This one's fancy. Was it's ours is ninety six, ninety four, ninety four. It's um, it's. The only ones that they've got pictures of in brochures are white. Uh, mm-hmm. This one's black with a red interior. But all of them in the brochures have red interior. So either the guy had a thing for red interior or because of the it was a limo company. Everything he had was red interior that we can find information on. Like you couldn't get it in another color. Relax. I, I do have a question. It may be a little bit out of hand. Nope. Mm-hmm. Ask. You said the difference between exter- ex. ex- Excursion? This, 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 dip, dip, Excursion, dip, dip. right? That's what mm-hmm. Seth has. Mm-hmm. The other little thing. Super duties. Yeah. I mean, it's diesel and it's like so, sort of so, Bronco-y. So the Ford Bronco, the Centurion C3, two, or C250, C350s were like the predecessor of the Excursion. They were like its, it's uh, grandfather. The difference in them is most of the Excursions have a lift hatch on the back with a set of barn doors, whereas the... C350, C250s uh, had the Bronco back glass that rolled down into a tailgate and then the tailgate open. Yes. That and... It was a Bronco back half, basically. It was a Bronco back half, basically. so the top is removable and you can take the top off just like a regular Bronco would be, whereas Excursion, it's just one whole long deal that you can't do anything with once it's once it's put uh, together. So, I, so does I, that mean we're going to put a gooseneck hitch in the back of the C three hundred and fifty? I saw somebody say that they were going to put a gooseneck hitch in one the other day. And I was like, <laughs> "Why in the hell would you do something like that?" Like Ford Avalanche, baby. Uh, <laughs> like it makes no sense to do something <laughs> like that. I mean, have so you met people the, in though? The, in the future, and then the back part comes off. Yeah, so just like a Bronco. Yeah, like, so the, the top will come the topper off. will come off, like the the Bronco top. Yeah. will come off and like the back cargo area and the back third row seat some of them had third row some of them didn't have third row paul's doesn't have a third row yeah, mine doesn't have a third row um all the space for a fifth wheel man <laughs> for some people yes so explain to uh explain to that's rustin <laughs> and everybody else that's listening to this that doesn't know anything about the four-door <laughs> four-door bronco the, the people that put a gooseneck hitch in the back of a four-door bronco <laughs> on a squalid <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, man. And they that's probably married to their sister. That's all the more room for it's a cat drone. drone. <laughs> you can launch your drone. <laughs> you can launch your drone straight from the Bronco. Explain explain to them what what the C three fifty was. Why was it bought? Where did it come from? Oh mine? Yes. So yours. so mine came from <laughs> I, I bought it from Itawa 
Horseshoe Volunteer Fire Department, or at least that's where it came from when it was new. And I'm assuming I pronounced that right. E-T-O-W-A-H is how it's spelled, however you want to pronounce it. But they bought it new from Ford in, I assume, was 96. I don't have any paperwork on that. But when it was built, it was built red and white. They painted it new red and white. The tailgate jams are all red. The door jams are all white. So it was when they stitched it all together, that's the way it was done. Yeah, it and wasn't it, white. They bought a white one and then had it painted. Yeah, no. It was it was bought for the fire department. Which is unfortunate. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't paint it like vermilion red. That would have been the thing. Like, it would have been awesome at that. But they picked the weird maroon. All their whatever. trucks are probably that color. And you just Buy here, pay here, maroon. Yeah. <laughs> I remembered it. <laughs> Buy so, here, pay here, maroon. So, like the color of Seth's uh, jacket red. Oh. No, that's no. the color it needed to be. Right. That's yeah. Right. yeah. But uh, it was. Vermilion red, like my fire truck. Yeah. So, it, it, it was. Uh, <laughs> It was it was a high both end. Both of them v- rusty, right? Well, they're both Centurions, so bingo. It was a high end vehicle for a volunteer fire department, so I, I would like to find out the story of why or how it was bought. Yeah, and all it that. was spending because it was not only a one ton; it was a power stroke. Yeah, and expensive. And, yeah, and four door Bronco at that, but it was a medical response unit. From what little information that I can gather, anyway, I bought it with ninety eight thousand miles on it back in May of twenty twenty. Uh, I originally was going to buy it in like 2018 or 19. How many messages? Messages? How many messages? Never mind. <laughs> you can do it. How many of those things did you get? <laughs> this said, I bet that thing's got a million idle hours on it because it was a fire truck. You know what? And I don't care about stupid people's questions, but wow, wow. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was targeted at me or not. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Oh, people, people, uh, in their idle hours on fire trucks, I don't give a damn fire trucks, fire departments typically take care of their stuff because they have to have it to respond somewhere. Besides that, I mean, it's idle hours. It's not, it's not as great of wear and tear as, is trumping down the road, but I want to know how many idle hours these 500,000 mile trucks are that these yees that are asking this question has on them. Oh boy. And, 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 you know, it comes down to personal preference here but i don't care I, i'll buy a fire truck over or buying something else but as long as it doesn't come from cincinnati ohio or mm. anywhere really in the northeast where the shit hole trucks come from but <clears throat> ask me why i know that those things are rusty mm-hmm. how are your pinch welds chris non-existent mm-hmm. so you got lucky and lucky unlucky <laughs> i got lucky you got unlucky you had to buy a cab you're lucky chris yeah. <laughs> yes good for me <laughs> so so my my truck typically the four-door bronco the roof is rusted the quarter fenders are rusted on them and the door jams are usually rusted pretty bad mine the roof is perfect now i'll go out there in a minute and it'll be but the roof is perfect the uh Quarter panels are perfect, and the door jams are perfect. The only rust that I found on the thing is the inner fender wheels in the bed of the truck are rusted out. But they cut those apart to build it where the spare tire could go on the inside because nobody made anything for that. So anyway, they cut it and welded it, cut it and welded it, cut it and welded it. So. And it's a loud mother driving down the road without the inner fender wheels and all the plastics and everything in yeah, it. Yeah, I didn't listen to that today. This is true. This is very true. But that shall soon be fixed. Paul's taking a note out of my book. He's slowly taking pieces off and not putting them back. Is, nope. there, is there a passenger hey. door panel in it? No. See? Hey, mine goes down the road, though. Oh, ouch. Mine still goes. Hey, you know what? His is rusty, so, like, every time he drives it, he is taking a little more <laughs> off of it. <laughs> a little bit fall off every time. Yeah. You shut the door. Wham! I did, I did make progress. I got my donor axle out and over to the other truck. That was a pretty good feat. Yeah. You never did get the leaf springs off the other one, did you? Nope, didn't try. I just took the whole shoot match out. I've never seen that in my life. I Where they wouldn't come off. I, I mean, I guess if I just got a really big hammer, I could get it loose. I, you can't even spin them. They're just straight rusted to the axle. Cincinnati. Rust. The whole back half of the truck was just trash. Seventeen thousand miles. I went as rusted. far as I went as far as like buying another truck, another F Super Duty for all the rear half suspension. Yeah. So that I can get all the hangers and everything. Uh, luckily enough, they bolt onto an F Super Duty. So. 
Not yep. Not rusty because of fire truck. Rusty because of Cincinnati. Cincinnati. And responded to and, rescue calls and, in the and, winter. And when we went to get it, it was rust free. Uh, yeah. Nope. I did learn that that the people 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 the people the people. <laughs> I did learn that the people in the Northeast. Their version of rust free and my version of rust free are two very different things. The Northeast is very different. Even the Midwest, like Missouri, there's rust, but the Northeast has got like the next level on that. Dude, mm -hmm. hey, 17,000 miles on this truck, right? I'm thinking, oh yeah, this is going to be a cool truck. Because I'm thinking, you know, I cut the frame short and put a flatbed on it, it'd be a cool truck. Oh no. Oh no. Pinch welds are gone. Underside of the cab's all rusted up. Frame is like got some like pitting. Like it's scale. It's an F the Super frame. Duty frame that's about the thickness of an F one fifty frame now. <laughs> well, and, and and it's a fire truck that gets washed every time it gets run, and it's I, still. I don't like think that. it did. There's no There's way. There's no way it did. There's no way that truck got washed. Uh, it's it's super, and I think that's because it had that big rescue body on it, and they couldn't get to the frame. They it probably sprayed the underside, like just sprayed at it. And didn't really get because the, the boxes like went down the side of the frame, so you probably just couldn't get to the suspension. Right. All it did was just like rinse all of the salt to the frame. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Sit there. So so like the the skid plate for the fuel tank, uh, the rear fuel tank is uh, like gone. Like not. Yeah. You just push the tank through. Yeah. I, I didn't even take the the skid. The, I didn't even take the skid plate or the mountain bracket off the tank. I just pushed it, and it just fell out. Makes it for an easy job. Okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so at this point, I'm taking loose all the suspension, the rear suspension off the other truck, swapping it over. I feel like we've kind of switched gears from his to yours now. Well, it just it's happens that way sometimes. Yeah, fire trucks. Rusty fire trucks. Rusty Centurions. Yeah. Synonymous. Rust and Centurion. Yes, very much so. It blows my mind that on your truck, they were like, hey, let's make a crew cab. Not, let's not buy one from Ford all the way already done. Let's yeah. cobble one together. So, so <laughs> what I, is that? Why, why, why would they do that? So I've got two theories on why Centurion did them that way. First, first theory. <laughs> it's still going, literally. <laughs> so I've got two theories why Centurion built them the way they built them. One, they had an engineer that was a on. <laughs> have you seen their wiring i don't think that's a question yeah lord forgive us two is they already had the jigs set up for building the crew cab like uh f-150s and 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 the they took that that jig was part of building the four-door broncos and the only thing that they had to change was the c-pillar is run the the bronco uh, quarter panel with the C pillar up and weld it together. So they were like, we've already got all of these pieces. So why, why buy a cab from Ford for, let's just throw out a number, $2,000 when we can buy all the sheet metal for 200 bucks and we can pay somebody a hundred dollars to weld it all together and come out ahead than just buying a whole cab and chunking a cab that's already got a VIN number because that's what they would have had to have done is they bought trucks with VIN numbers already associated with an F-150 or a 250 or a 350. And so they had that title, that VIN, on those doors and on those door jams. Seems like they'd have built a better product if they would have just it's, got the VIN reassigned to the new cab. I was going to say, they're, like, and so, then they wouldn't have gone out of business. I was going to oh. say, there's a reason why they're no longer in business, and yeah. that's probably part of it. Since, since they worked directly with Ford, they could be like, hey, send us a cab. Or... Hey, we wanna we wanna build crew cab F super duties. Build me some, right? Off yeah. the assembly line. Well, and and I I think that too comes back to I mean Ford is this big giant conglomerate that's not listening to somebody that's doing two thousand vehicles a year. Touche. They're yeah. they're they're going to say this is what we build. You you get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. And so Centurion said, "To hell with you. This is we'll just buy all the parts individually, and we'll build our own." And I mean the trucks already came rolling. And assembled, they cut them, stretched them, made new drive shafts, stretched the wiring harnesses, and they did an awful job of oh, all of it. Well, I mean, man, all all of it. Ha have you hired employees before? Cricket. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, but like when you're. <laughs> 
this is this is why we're on a second episode of this. Dang it. Ah, I got him. Dang it. Got him. Got him. No. As he's checking to make sure the audio is recording. <laughs> yeah. you, you just got a new nickname. We're going to call you Centurions. <laughs> <laughs> Oof. Please no. Oof. You're a little rusty on the back half. <laughs> oh. oh, dang. <laughs> <coughs> oh. But anyway, they came as an assembled truck that they cut apart and started modifying. So it was cheaper to modify what they had than to go into the scrap pile and buy from Ford to put new. That would have made, I think that would have made the vehicle prices that much more expensive. And these were already like when you bought them because the paint, the graphics, well, I say the, the graphics, the, the design of the paint, the, the steps, the leather interiors, because you couldn't buy a leather truck from Ford. Um, so what you're saying is build it as cheap as possible, sell it for as much as possible. Yep. Yeah. I mean, ah, capitalism. Yep. The American way. Mm. So, and then outsource to China. Oh, oh I, I think it was, I think it was Choo Choo Customs that bought them out. Choo Choo Customs? Yeah, it, it it may not have been Choo Choo Customs that bought them. <laughs> choo Choo. I mean, that was the name of the company. They went but, from building fire trucks to Choo Choo trains. Well, they had a train in their logo. I had one of their trucks too. But um, Why am I not surprised? I can't remember. There was he another. Had weird trucks. There was another company that bought Centurion out, and they went out of business in somewhere around 2003 or four ish i don't know i've lost track of the information from there but anyway they were they were the top of the line they were high class stuff back then if you were anybody you had something like that you because you couldn't just roll up and say i want one you had to either catch the dealership with one on the lot that they had ordered or you had to go in and you had to put your money down you had to custom order it and then you had to wait six months to a year to get the damn thing this yeah. was the choo choo company no Centur- centurion Just any of those in general yeah, really. any any conversion company western hauler um choo choo customs two L, Regency, show, yeah. show trucks usa uh-huh. i think i've got a, a compiled list so far of about 25 custom makers back then <clears throat> that no longer do it but yeah, they what, were was, still what was like, the one that built the nascar truck uh, uh la west la west yeah and that was the one i'd never heard of until the other day LA, are LA, you gonna buy that thing or what I don't know. You gonna loan me some money? You the one got all the money, Seth. So, Seth. So huh? let me I get this right. Money. They're high class vehicles, to mm-hmm. own, mm-hmm. but they're made like crap. Uh, yeah. They, so they were they were pieced together, and their pieced together jobs s- weren't. We're, we're mostly talking good. about Centurion here. Yeah. So so let, yeah, let's right. let's back up. They were they were top quality for 1990s technology. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I mean. Yeah. What what else that was built in the '90s that was built to that degree of customization that's still running on the roads as a daily driver? Not much. I mean, because you had you had limousine companies that were building stuff because this wasn't a production like it wasn't stamped out and then primed and then painted on an assembly line as a prefabbed piece. This was all put together and made. So, you know. Very few, I would assume. Yeah. Why would they ever just buy a cab that way? It was all stamped together. <laughs> right. I don't know why they would have done something like that. That would have only made too much sense. Right. But I mean, you couldn't buy a six door cab. <laughs> Touche. You couldn't buy a four door. You could have bought a crew cab and then another. But it's still, you'd have still had the same thing because you'd had to weld it. Then you only had one bad scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like. Uh, like I say, I, I think it was it was quality for the time. I don't think that it would. I don't think that a they thought that they were still going to be on the road twenty something years later, and and you know a lot of them have had hard lives. I mean, a lot of the Centurion Dooleys that you Yours see is have literally a fire truck. Uh huh. I've never seen somebody get into a fire truck and go, okay, we're going to take it easy now. Mm hmm. Is so does it run for a week? Gets in it, fires it up, foot to the floor, right, all the way to the fire. Yep. And then foot to the floor all the way back to the fire station. Mm-hmm. And then park it and not think about it again for another week. Yep. But, I mean, that was I, – I think they've they've caught a, a bad rap because most of them sit outside or people never maintained them. Or once they traded off and got a new Super Duty when the King Ranches <laughs> came out and things like that, they kind of were forgotten, if Discarded. you will. And so, and so, and so they the misfit toys. Well, and and I've seen production trucks 
I've seen. Yeah, hold on, back that up. I've seen newer trucks that have been <laughs> neglected. I have seen newer trucks that have had people that thought they knew how to wire wire on them. That's better. Thank yeah. you. I made it PG for all of our viewers at home. Um, that are are in worse shape than what a Centurion production was because Touché. of like the dude that put the subwoofers in the, in the tires behind his seat yeah <laughs> dude what <laughs> you haven't seen that these lawnmower tires make subwoofer oh, boxes I've seen all sorts but, of stuff but, but that's besides <laughs> the point <laughs> Russian to the like, like wait a second redneck people out there boy <laughs> they got squalets <laughs> <laughs> and we're back full circle baby you, usually Woo! those Usually those people have a ZF5 truck. AZ. <laughs> what happened to the class, man? Uh, what ZF5 sa- truck? Save the manuals. Stick shift. Save oh. the manuals. Yay, yay. Anyways. So. <laughs> He's going to smack you. <laughs> Wait, you have one? Yes. Yes. Sweet. I mean, I daily drive. <laughs> Your daily driver. I daily drive a ZF5 speed. When it runs. It runs just fine. It just doesn't. The the sending unit float doesn't. Wait, work. is that one out there? <laughs> it says oh, it's full. White truck. The white truck? No, it says it's empty. Oh. Yeah, my white truck's five speed. Sweet looking truck. Thank I you. I drive it. See? Can you drive a five speed? That my first truck. I mean, millennials and shit. Five speed. Okay. You're not tall enough to be able to jump in it. That's you. And you. I'm fine. I Look, get it fine. I can jump higher than you are tall, dude. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. Thought we were going somewhere else there yep, for a second. Nope, nope, nope. So, so back to... I can jump higher than you are right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cuts to a clip of somebody jumping over Seth behind the cameras <laughs> and tripping over the wires. <laughs> oh, Smash. my leg, my leg. But uh, anyways, back to wiring issues. Mm. Centurion was not known for having the best wiring, but I think for the time and for probably some of the employees that they were able to employ heaven forbid we solder things right right they they did like to use butt splices and scotch locks mm-hmm. but efficiency for well I, i'm sure i'm sure that was part of it it was, it was faster to do that than it was mm-hmm. to solder stuff I, I think they were doing with the best with what they had at the time giving all circumstances not just saying that they could have had a better this or they could have had a better that just as an overall product in the uh, the amount I, I somebody come to me on facebook a while back that said in the mid 90s that um production come to the floor of centurion and they went from producing five trucks a day to somewhere around uh 20 trucks a day so <laughs> I'm sorry. I got distracted. <laughs> we know. <laughs> okay. So they they went from roughly five trucks a day to 20 trucks a day getting them out. And that's a lot of cutting and splicing and making cabs and painting stuff and laying down their crazy graphics and all that and, and adding chrome bumpers and, and whatnot. So it, it took a pretty good crew to put it all together and get it out. Do you have any idea how many of those things they made? I've seen numbers all over the place. I, I'm assuming with a 7.3 power stroke in them, there's probably less than 3,000 total that were made. And probably right now, there's probably less than 1,500 of them still on the road. That would be a, a, a wild guess, honestly, because they they didn't really keep production numbers. So what numbers. you're saying is you just made that up? Yeah. Like they say, really you know, 50% of the time, one. it's always right. So. Moving but, on. I just... Uh... That's why I asked about the excursion because I probably won't ever get one of those. But I can get one. So. Mm-hmm. Well, well, excursions it, are getting hard to find. Yeah, out. yeah, excursions are super hard to get. Like uh, a seven three excursion right now is going to cost you thirty five grand pretty easy. So that, Seth, Seth has probably gone up in value since he bought his a year ago. Uh, and I mean, his is a two wheel drive with a six zero, but the horrible six zero. That's why I was going to ask when did they, they started building those in ninety nine. No. Uh, uh, Oh, oh, one. Oh, one. Oh, one. Yeah. Oh, oh, one through. Seven, three and oh, one. Oh, one to oh, oh, seven. Seven, seven three ran all the way to oh, three. Yeah. Mine's no three, but mine's a six, oh, oh, three. Yeah, he, he's got an early version. But I mean, even even those are expensive. I mean, the, the, um, 
And they only ran to 05, right? What? Excursions? No, no they ran to 07, I do yeah, believe. Yeah, 07. 07. But like the um, the four-door Broncos, if you can catch one with a power stroke in it, you're going to pay an ungodly amount of money for it, uh, even in a, a shit condition with needing floors. I, there's one for sale on Facebook Marketplace right now that needs all the interior, needs a roof, needs quarter panels, and needs rocker panels in the doors and a floorboard, and the guy wants like $12,000 for it, mm-hmm. and he won't come off of that price. And, like, uh, <clears throat> and and the nicer they get, the more expensive they get. And every day, OVSs and stuff are getting more expensive. It's like, I got set the uh, link. Did y'all see that brick nose that sold on uh, Ranger Trailer today? Uh uh-uh. Not the brick nose, no. No, I'm sorry, not a brick nose. Bull nose. I'm sorry, it was a bull. It was a 1980 uh-huh. bull nose. I guess not. It sold for $97,000. Jeez. Mm. It was a custom. Is it the blue one, single yes. cam, that had like it 12 miles? It had 76 miles on it. Yeah. Ooh. But it was a bare bones single cam full wheel drive. It mm. was literally nothing. Like that truck was the cheapest truck you could buy back then. They just bought the cheapest thing. Mm-hmm. It sold for 97, 96. Cheap. Uh, well, really, really, well, it's, really, it's, really expensive. It's like when I found this one. It's a 7.3 Power Stroke, one ton C350 with 98,000 miles on it. Me and the guy agreed on a price, and yeah. right after we agreed on the price, ninety-seven thousand dollars. Yeah. Mm. So right at, right after we agreed on the price, mm. the Rona hit, and all the states shut down, and I couldn't get to Georgia to pick the thing up, and he was super kind enough to hang on to it for me. He hung on to it for like two months until things kind of lined out. I drove to Georgia. I got out of the truck, and he said, "There it is, if you want to look at it." And I just handed him a wad of cash. Said, "I don't need to look at it." I, I came to get it. I, I didn't drive all the way from Texas to Georgia not to buy the darn yeah, thing. Yeah, I, I knew what it was. I, I I didn't care if it had rust. I didn't care this. I didn't care that. I It was a four-door Bronco. It was solid like the pictures showed. And it was basically exactly- Under 100,000 miles. Under 100,000 miles. Here's the cash. I, I took it. I backed the trailer up to the barn and it rolled 30 feet from the trailer, from the barn onto my trailer <laughs> and back home I came. And since then, I put 12,000 miles on it. So, but- they're they're just hard to get and when you get one you hang on to it especially if it's in in pretty decent shape so i've had a thousand people try to buy it from me and it's not for sale so um everything's yes. for sale Mm-mm. You everything's would, you'd have sale. to have a really deep pocket some people do everything's for sale except my dog except the dog and your wife i was um, everything's for sale yeah Ooh. you're stretching it oof I was Edit. exploring the other day. Mm-hmm. Sent I sent a link to Seth, but it was it was a clean. I think it was like ninety six. It was F two fifty. It was clean. Twenty nine thousand. Mm-hmm. Hey, cheap. They sold a they sold a uh, uh, crew cab long bed four wheel drive F three fifty for forty four thousand dollars today. Forty four grand. That truck new probably sold for twenty nine thirty. I'm, I'm curious to see what Halston Steele's truck that he got from Zach Lewis goes for with the twenty eight thousand miles really on it. It hurts my feelings that we didn't buy that. Yeah, it uh, it's 40, on forty forty five. It's on bring a trailer right now. I think I think Zach's gonna be sick if it goes over over thirty five. He could have put it on bring a trailer. I mean, but uh, I'm curious to see where that one winds I up. I bet at. it brings forty five, especially in the climate right now. Mm-hmm. I mean, they they they. They sold a brick nose. They or bull nose. They they literally sold a nineteen eighty bull nose single cab, no power, nothing for ninety seven thousand dollars today. Mm-hmm. Ninety seven thousand dollars. What was that truck new? Eight Two grand? grand, three grand, eight grand. It's probably eight grand. <laughs> no, it was probably eight or nine, eight, somewhere in that maybe? range. So it sold for ninety thousand more dollars than it sold for new. <laughs> I mean, which is great. It, it, ever that that's one thing I want to make this point. Everybody, everybody complains about the cost of these trucks going up. It's only going to create more potential for better aftermarket support Mm -hmm. because businesses are not going to invest the capital in in remaking product if the money is not there to be remade. Mm -hmm. So if, if there's nobody to spend the money on parts, you're never going to get those parts that have been discontinued by Ford because companies are not going to invest in something they can't get a return on. Mm -hmm. So... These collectors buying these low mile, like that Bronco that sold for ninety grand, this truck today that sold for ninety seven, um, the blue truck that sold on there for thirty five, it, it's dri- and then resold for forty four. It's it's driving the truck market up so that hopefully less and less of them get trashed out and more and more of them stay in a in a nicer condition. But it also is driving the aftermarket 
to uh, innovate for these trucks because yeah, because there's going to be money in it. There, well, there's going to be. I mean, at the end of the day, you've got to be able to make money to be able to stay in business. So that's the only people, the only time that somebody's going to <laughs> what, to build stuff for. Well, them. in the '90s, Lund made fiberglass products for the truck. Weld made wheels for the trucks. Ranch Hand made bumpers for the truck, and Weston made brush guards for the truck. And that yeah. was your aftermarket. Mm-hmm. There wasn't banks. Banks made their yeah. power pack kit with an intercooler, I mean, auto mine. ATS the, made made parts for it. The aftermarket support wasn't huge like it is nowadays because these trucks weren't what trucks are nowadays. Yeah, they were. They were large. workhorses. People bought them to use them. They weren't like some kind of showpiece. So there just wasn't a huge aftermarket support for anything back then, other than hot rods. Mm-hmm. That was it. I mean, their pickup trucks were not a thing. To be modified and, and, and now that then. these now that these have started to become a collector item, it, it's it's driving more people to get back the truck that their dad had new, or the truck that their grandpa bought new, or or something that they bought new in high school and and had to sell it because they started a family or whatnot. It's coming back around to now they can have that truck back. It can sit in the garage and look pretty and go to car shows. And well, because, and there are more and more companies like us out there that are that are continually innovating and, and building new products for them because the aftermarket support is there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I just want to make that clear that everybody that always thinks that it's terrible that these things are going up in value, it's not because that means that they're going to get preserved. Well, and and people should also be thankful that that they are going up in value because the truck that they are driving every day, even though they're driving it every day, is still appreciating in value and. A truck that they bought for ten grand two years ago now is worth fifteen thousand dollars. In in two years, it might be worth twenty thousand dollars with more miles on it. I think it's mostly just the people that haven't bought one yet that are mad because it's going up and they couldn't afford one anyway, and now they're really mad because they're really expensive. Well, it's like buying an early Bronco. Like <laughs> that was a boat that you missed about five years ago. <laughs> it's like when I when I bought mine, it was a non runner that had a James Duff lift on it and needed a ton of body work and i paid seven or eight grand for it back when i bought it and now in the same condition that same bronco would cost 25 grand or better Mm -hmm. but that that bronco restored is a hundred and twenty thousand so hopefully i keep my bronco long enough for it to be worth that kind of money (laughs) (laughs) right well i mean well it Technically, that's what I keep telling my wife. I don't These things are investments. It. I mean, it, seriously. What's Dave Ramsey say? He, he says, says if you can make money, then you're golden. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, and if yeah, you don't, you and if you don't owe money, you're good to go. <laughs> and I don't have either. So yeah, I don't have any and, money and, left because and, I, all, I just spend it all. What, what's no what's it? Uh, <laughs> your your vehicle should not be more than twenty five percent of your annual income. He your didn't net worth. Say, net worth. Okay, so that I means. Think. If your net worth is a lot of money and you have a bunch of OBSs, you're still good to go. Can I count my OBSs as part of my net worth? Yes. Uh, Loophole. Uh, <laughs> and yes. It, and so your net worth is even greater than... And it goes up every year because OBSs absolutely. are getting more, worth more money. Oh, so my. you and, can get more OBSs. Yeah, and OBS is like Bitcoin, but for people with intelligence. Oh, here we go. How do we figure out wow. how to make people mine OBSs? Well, first let's figure out how a broke millennial almost gen z person like me gets into an obs you buy one right now we got but we got at least four to choose from right now <laughs> but someone who who doesn't necessarily have the money to turn it around and get it on the road right now have you ever heard of uh, manual labor so so i knew him <laughs> <laughs> he mowed grass with us back when we worked it <laughs> Uh, can't put that in the podcast. That's a genuine <laughs> question because I really want one, and I really want to get to get rid of Podunk see, Chevy. So, so that that depends on what specifically do you want? Do you want one like the truck you used to have, the four wheel drive F one fifty? Do you want a diesel? Do you, what do you want? You want it two wheel drive? You want four wheel drive? I want a four door something. So I would rather it be four wheel. I would rather have a four wheel drive, but I know it's gonna be more expensive. So what you're gonna have, have to a diesel, but you got You got to figure out your budget. And then you got to figure out what items you need your you you need slash want your truck to have, and you got to work with that budget. And if the truck that you want does not fit in that budget, then you need to add more money to your budget. And or you keep... sacrifice something out of your need. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So you you say, well, I can get away with an extended cab for right now because it's going to save me 
five grand on buying a truck because a four door is worth more money, or or I can buy a four door, but it's going to have to be a two wheel drive with a gas motor in it, so I can get, you know, the four I, I can get the color I want or, then, or something like that. And then you uh you just kind of keep your eyes peeled. Uh, we all we all surf way too much on <laughs> social media and stuff like that. So like marketplace, you know, you constantly searching marketplace or any of the facebook groups you're on that that people sell stuff and stuff like that um craigslist different places like that you just constantly look a lot of times most people find the best deals that they can find driving around like Mm -hmm. as they're traveling and going somewhere here or there somebody somebody's grandpa's got their truck out the truck that they bought new out for sale in front of their house and they have no idea what it's worth and they're selling a really really clean because old men always took really good care of their trucks um really clean like four-wheel drive crew cab for yeah. $10,000 less than what it's worth. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That was literally the story of my, my first truck. In I, I, that's yeah. that's typically how, how the best deal, and those they're still every day we get somebody sent to uh, send us, hey, this truck's for sale down the street from my uh, my work or down the street from my house. Mm-hmm. This guy's got his, this truck parked in his driveway in some random neighborhood in some random town with a for sale sign on the windshield. So it's you'll never find it online, but you know, that's that's a lot of times how how those deals are found. And I get correct me if I'm wrong, but I guess it wouldn't be a bad idea to sacrifice it. Like I say, I want a seven three and I want four door and four wheel drive, but if I can only afford, uh, you know, F one fifty gas, that's four door and two wheel drive. Now you can't it's gonna, afford an F one fifty four door. It's gonna <laughs> that's one of the most expensive ones. Okay, well maybe maybe yeah. not. But say if I can you, afford if, something cheaper. If you cheaper. could, if you could. Uh, you could, if you say, if you wanted a crew cab, short bed, four wheel drive, which is unfortunately the most expensive configuration you can buy in a diesel, you could buy a crew cab, short bed, two wheel drive, which would significantly decrease the value of the truck because it's two wheel drive. Can I interest you in a in a salvage title one with like five hundred thousand miles <laughs> that he cut the fenders up on? Hey, no, any hood stack in it? You Anyways. Work? I mean, and sits two inches off the ground. It's not even that low. You could you could find one like that, and then in the future find yourself uh, a parts truck four wheel drive that you could rob the parts it. from and convert it to four wheel drive because the aftermarket supports four wheel drive conversion with mm. uh, frame boxing plates and RSKs and stuff like that to make the conversion happen. Axle swaps and I, was, and I guess I was gonna say too, like if maybe it's not the exact truck I want now, or maybe whoever's watching that's in the same boat as me. Um, they hold their. You're gonna get your value back out of it. Yeah, like yeah. In so five years, you can trade out. Yeah. Sell it. So you can, you can uh, like, like the whole the red paperclip for a house scenario. Like if you found one that you you could be happy with for now, nothing is ever set in stone, and you can always, as it's appreciating in value, you can always like trade up to uh, a nicer one, or maybe somebody wants that configuration that has a crew cab that's willing to basically trade you. You see what I'm saying? Like, well, well uh, kind of to, to go on his deal there, you've got an extended cab long bed four-wheel drive that's a certain color. And you like it, but you want a crew cab, and somebody's got a crew cab that they post up for sale because they want an extended cab four-wheel drive in the color that you have because yeah. that's the truck they've always wanted. And my, they bought My a- grandpa had a red one, and I really just – I, I don't need the crew cab. I really want a truck like my grandpa's truck. So like I would trade you. That, that stuff happens. Yeah, all the time. I mean, the 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 one the biggest the biggest piece of advice is if you get one, don't molest it. Don't cut the dash out to put a dual den in. Don't uh, <laughs> don't wow. don't paint it some sort of weird off the wall color where the door jams don't match the outside of the truck. Don't uh well the, at the end of the day that's pretty much the same way with like anything that you buy and sell if you intend to ever sell it you can't you can't make it too far away from what it was originally because it it, it significantly decreases the value yeah the the more original and the more 90s the truck is the 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 easier it is to for it to appreciate in value and for you to find a buyer for it now let's just I let's can use, feel Devin's head exploding right now because we're talking about make sure you keep it stock yeah yeah well i mean the the more you modify it the less your market is for selling it at a later date but also the the more you don't get value by adding aftermarket to the truck it it doesn't work that way and then 
you're you're looking at a very like i said specific person like he may not like weld wheels and i do or he he may want well here, prime example i like all the crazy painted ones where they're like 14 different colors from the 90s like a centurion he likes solid color stuff so a truck gross a, a truck to him that is a solid color is worth more value than than my centurion is so your your buyers are going to be based off of of something Hence like why i have a truck called the pawpaw truck right and it's white but <laughs> but like you know you white like change, changing Not headlights and, and tail lights and putting bolting some wheels on and anything that bolts on and bolts off that's fine that's fine because the value doesn't decrease or increase based off of those because you can carry it right back to stock with you know, two hours worth of work right. versus, you at, know, at the end of the day, being open-minded about a, about a vehicle, like finding one, like I said a while ago, that maybe is, is, uh, not four wheel drive. You can make it four wheel drive a lot less expensive. If you get a good enough deal on a two wheel drive one, than buying a four wheel drive crew cab, short bed for a uh, power strip. Mm-hmm. Um, or, um, say you just, I, I just, I, always always wanted a white with blue stripe crew cab long bed you can buy a solid white one and have a blue stripe painted on it for a lot mm-hmm. less money than you can find a white and blue yeah. it at the end of the day that's not exactly what the vin number was but like if you don't care about that kind of stuff you just more or less i want this specific truck you there's ways around getting what you want um with aftermarket support that um then just finding that specific truck now if you're just a purist and I just I have to have this truck. It had to have been from the factory and blah blah blah. You you better have a you're big pocket. You're paying for book. it. Yeah, you're gonna well, you're gonna pay for it. Yeah, well, but you can you can make it happen mm-hmm. if you just get creative. Most people don't buy trucks with steel wheels on them because they're ugly. Buy a truck with steel wheels on it. Buy a set of Alcoas. Have them polished. Put them on the truck. Buy hubcaps. Voila, Done. truck looks totally different. Mm-hmm. Something that I would like to do on some of these is at the end I would like to do a little bit of Q and A stuff. Maybe people have questions. Maybe uh, uh, Rustin is is constantly writing stuff down and asking questions. But you know, other people that aren't here that aren't listening to this uh, in person, well, well, like, uh, can can comment on the video, can email so, us questions and stuff like that. We'll pick four or five of them and answer them at the end yeah, of each so, episode. So this will obviously not just on the podcast. It will go to YouTube. You're welcome to leave a comment on YouTube, and we will we will answer those. Uh, on the next episode, some of them. We'll, some pick, of, we'll pick them. We'll, I'm going. This is this is not a democracy. This is a dictatorship. Yep. <laughs> yep. So it's a good one. So so we'll we'll answer questions from YouTube, but also if you want to send in questions, uh, contact at cpaddict.com, just like our website. Contact. Yeah, contact. Contact. Um, but but send it over to contact at cpaddict or leave a comment in the YouTube video. And then we'll pick questions from from those deals. And as we do each episode, we'll interject more and more. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, more and more content from you. Uh, well, and, and then like, well, we would also like to to hear like, are there things that you want to know? Are there things that you'd like to ask us uh, questions about that you want us to do a, an episode on? And you know that that will give us ideas to uh, to get that information out because we know a lot of stuff and a lot of times. Without somebody just say, "Hey, well, I'd like to know about this." I don't necessarily know. Do we need to make a, an episode on that? Is it is it something that we can? Well, there's there's a there's a ton of misconceptions about OBS trucks of what you could buy, like configurations of cabs or or common things like the LED third brake light stuff and and all of that that we can answer in these episodes. If you've had that question and you haven't found the answer to it, we probably know the answer to it. So we can kind of help dispel some myths or we we can can just make something up. Yeah. Like 50% (laughs) of the time. So I don't know. Um, yeah. So like, and subscribe on them worldwide internets. Moral of the story. OBS trucks are like Bitcoin. Buy now. Yes. Yes. Except they they will never lose value. True. Buy tangible.